All right. Does anyone have any questions? What's that? Sure. Are you an atheist? And why are you asking me to prove that God exists? Okay, well, uh, what do you mean by proof? Anything outside the Bible that can prove that the one that you call God does exist. Okay, but what you just said was you don't have any physical evidence. Are you saying... I don't have evidence. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you think proof must be physical? That's the only kind of evidence there is, is physical proof. Oh, that's not true. Um, as a Christian, you believe in logic, right? I believe in logic, but the Bible does not tell me. Okay, do you have physical proof that logic exists? I did not say it. You said the only kind of proof there is is physical. Do you have physical proof that logic exists? Logic is not a noun. It is an idea. You uh, have contact information. So you don't, so according to you, because you have no physical proof that logic exists, therefore logic does not exist. No, logic is an idea. Ideas no, logic is not just an idea. Yes, it is. Logic is a way of thinking. Only physical things can exist. Uh, that's not true, because God's not physical. God is spirit. God, I'm, you're saying, God, according to you, God doesn't exist. But God is spirit, and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Love isn't physical, love exists. Logic isn't physical, logic exists. Morality is not physical, morality exists. No, it's an idea. Uh, no, morality is not just an idea. Uh, well, some people think it's an opinion. But I will tell you this, morality is not an opinion. Morality is an absolute truth. Sure is. And if you're a Christian, you think morality is an opinion, you have problems. More problems than you know of. Logic is created by man. It's Says an who? Abstract concept of human co cognition. Is that what God is, sir? So morality. So, so logic was created by man. That's your assertion. I don't agree with that. But you're saying logic is created. Logic always has been. Logic always will be. It's part of God's nature. Part of God's character. We're made in His image. That's how we know logic exists. That's why we're logical beings. That's why I can say if you're being illogical. You're being logical because I know it exists. And the only way it could possibly exist and be uniform across the board and be absolute across the board, and I can call you illogical absolutely, is if it existed be before humans existed and apart from the authority of humans saying it exists. For someone to say, this is logical, this is illogical, there must be a standard in the middle of what's to judge, logical, illogical. My question for you, young man, where would you get that standard from? Well, I still have logic. Yes. I don't have a standard of logic. I learn new logic every day. Uh, no, I don't think so. You don't learn, you don't learn new logic every day. Uh, let's just take one law of logic, so I can be more specific here. The law of non-contradiction. Okay? The law of non-contradiction, which says, if I have an equation, and I give two separate answers to that equation, they can't both be right. Okay? Sure is. In the same instance, they can't both be right. So, if that is a law, and that law is absolute, and that law is immaterial, it's not a physical thing, hold on, I'm talking to him right now, and that law is immaterial, and it's absolute, it transcends you, it transcends me, we started existing at some point in time. So did every other human here. Logic always has been, logic always will be, because part of God's nature, part of his character, and, uh, when we're made in his image, we become logical because he's logical. So for you to say anything is logical or illogical, you must have a standard in the middle both to judge logical, illogical. Now, if you're going to say that standard came from man, then it can be, you can think something's logical, and I can say at the same time, I can say at the same time it's illogical, and we can both be right. But that's not how logic works. Logic is not the invention of man. Never has been. Morality is not the invention of man. Um, so, uh, you, there were no morals before the Bible. What's that? So non-Christians before either the Old Testament or the New Testament had no morals. Oh no, the, the Old Testament and New Testament reveal the morality that's intrinsically within us, put in us by God. You have the conscience given to you by God. The Bible says the, the law of God is written upon your heart. So before the Bible was around, 
Before Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, and later on the rest of it, you knew right from wrong. That's why Romans 5 says, people between Adam and Moses, before the law was around, who did not commit the same kind of sin that Adam committed, a direct command of God, which Adam committed a sin against that, they still were sinners because they were breaking their law of their conscience that God had given them. So yes, every person here knows right from wrong intrinsically because God put it inside of you. God's written his law upon your heart. You know right from wrong. You know it's wrong to commit adultery. You know it's wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to fornicate. You know it's wrong to steal. You know it's wrong to take God's name in vain. Hey guys, one last announcement. Ball Palooza is the last day of class. That is April 30th. It's going to be at World Fair Park. Campus Entertainment Force is putting it on. This is going to be a heated guest. Thud over time. It's probably going to be anti Christian, according to them. We're going to have Ashley Roth opening. I love college. Vlogging Molly, good, good Irish, you know, like drunkard music, like that, the drunkard. Yeah, exactly. And then we have Passion Pit. Well, I do not know that well, but people love Passion Pit. Hipster love. But it's April 30th, and if you're a senior, there will be senior hour. We'll be giving away tons of free stuff. That starts at 5 o'clock, I believe. Doors open at 6, 7 o'clock. Wait a second. Park. Last day of class is April 30th, Ball Palooza. Yeah, hold on one second. Uh, uh, in a second, hold on a second, I'll get to you. So as I was saying, you know right from wrong. Uh, you don't even need the Bible to tell you right from wrong. You know right from wrong. Outside of the Bible, the Bible just affirms what you already know within you. And that's why God will hold each one of you accountable on Judgment Day for your sins. You know right from wrong. You simply choose to do wrong. I'll get to you in a second, be patient. And because you've chosen to do wrong, just like I have in the past, you deserve judgment, you deserve hell, but God offers you salvation. He offers you forgiveness, He offers you reconciliation to Himself, to a right relationship with Him. If you repent of your sins, forsake your sins and trust in Jesus Christ, and then walk a life of holiness. If you refuse to do that, God will get you what you deserve. But if you trust in Christ, turn from your sins and follow Him, you get what you don't deserve, and that's forgiveness and grace. Now, what was your question, young man? Okay, how do you define logic? How do I define logic? He's asking me a question right now. Please don't be rude. Say that it, it's a part of God and is God. So, it, logic is simple what truth points out. So, if you're saying this is so logical, one plus one equals two is what you're saying. Yep. But here's the problem. You're, if you say you're presenting truth to all these people, are getting hate back to you because what you're doing is not logical. If you're preaching the things of God, then people who are not of God are not going to understand. Um, what did Christ do? He went out with love. Can I stop you right there? You're saying so many things. I'm, I'm going to try to address them all, but you're saying so many things I'm having a hard time keeping up with it all. First, you asked me what logic is. Okay, yeah, so what? Lo let me just answer what logic is, okay? Logic reflects the, the mind of God. That's what it is. Reflects the mind of God. That's not a Christian can't understand what you're saying. Uh, who can't understand what I'm saying? Nobody that's not of God. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. If no one can understand what I'm saying, it wouldn't bother coming here, first of all. The Bible, are you a professing? You can't say that. Are you a Christian? What? Are you a Christian? Yes. Are you a Calvinist? What? Are you a Calvinist? I am a Christian. Do you believe in Calvinism? I am. Do you believe God has chosen eternity past? Who's going to go to heaven? Who's going to go to hell? Well, I'm asking if you believe what the Bible says. Okay, yeah, so that's the problem we have here. I don't believe God chose an eternity past, heaven, hell, heaven, hell, heaven, hell. I don't think he did that. No doubt in my mind. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that you have free will given to you by God. The Bible teaches that God is drawing all men near, convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment by the Holy Spirit. He's commanding all men everywhere to repent. And because these things are going on, you have the ability to repent. So on Judgment Day, when you stand before God and you haven't repented of your sins, you haven't trusted in Christ, you haven't walked in holiness, God, won't, uh, God will say, you're, you're condemned to hell. And you won't be able to say, well, God, you didn't regenerate me. God, you didn't choose me. God, you didn't make me repent. God, you didn't make me have faith. You're not going to be able to do it because it's your responsibility to repent. It's your responsibility to have faith. It's your responsibility to live holy, not God's. Calvinism, Calvinism 
is simply a distortion of God's character. It says that God has picked an eternity past, who's going to heaven, who's going to hell. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says that God wants all to be saved and for none to perish. Christ shed his blood on the cross for the whole world. For God to love the world. He gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So Calvin is a distortion of the character of God, maligns the character of God, and makes him responsible for people going to hell, when it's the sinner's responsibility that they're going to hell. No one else's. No, I, he, that wasn't his question. I answer, hold on a second. I answered the first part of his question. That was the second part of his question, that they can't understand it. And I explained to him, yes, they can understand it. That's the only reason I speak it. Then why, then why did Paul... Why did Paul, in the book of Acts, reason with people, persuade people? He did those things because he realized it would actually help them come to the faith. Right? But, so are you telling me that Paul loves him more than God does? No, I'm saying he doesn't know who's going or anything. That's you and that's me. No one knows who's going where. Oh, I don't agree with that. Where, where does the Bible say that? How did Paul preach? He preached in public places. Jesus preached in public places. Oh, no, no. Most people hated Jesus. John chapter 7 and verse 7. Jesus said, the world hates me. Why? I testify that their works are evil. So most people hated Jesus because they testify that their works are evil. Oh, my problem is nothing, young man. Your problem is you're believing the traditions of Augustine and Calvin, not, not what the Bible teaches. I'm believing exactly what the Bible teaches. No, you don't. I believe in original sin. Original sin is not taught by the Bible. That's one strike. Oh, young man, you know what the Greek word for preaching is? No, the Greek word for preaching is caruso, and it means to proclaim loudly in a public place so as many people as possible can hear. You can shake your head all you want, but it's the truth. Oh, I'm not getting people to hate me. Their sinful hearts, if they hate me, their sinful hearts are hating the message. Oh, no, no. They hate you because all you're doing is screaming at them how they're wrong and you're right. Oh, no, young man. No, first, first of all, first of all, I don't think I've screamed yet. Uh, second of all, I'm speaking loudly so many people can hear me. Third of all, if they hate me, you can't blame me for it. If your God is right, then you blame your God for it. Because God, according to you, according to you, the God of Calvinism predestines all things whatsoever come to pass. Therefore, it's not my fault they hate me. It's actually God's fault they hate me. And God not only predestined them to hate me, according to your theology, he predestined me to yell. So it's all God's fault, according to your theology, not my fault. Why are you blaming me? Why are you being so hard on me? Is genocide moral? Is genocide moral? Answer me that. Is genocide moral? You're, you're talking about genocide. God in the Old Testament wiping out whole groups of people? Kill yeah. everyone in that tribe. Yeah, I, the women, leave it, burn it down, and get out. Well, God never said... God commands. That's your God. Oh, no, sinner. God didn't command people to rape people. God didn't command anyone to rape anyone. Never has, never will. God did command... Ethnic cleansing. Wait a minute now, are you an atheist? Yes, I'm an atheist. Now what standard of morality are you using, Mr. Atheist, to say that God was wrong? Oh, don't tell okay. me. Don't, don't. Morality existed long before you. No, tell me, tell me what the standard is. Hammurabi was a rule of law. Who says... Before Judaic law was ever even thought. I'm not talking about law. Who says uh, genocide is wrong? This list, hold on a second. It's, it's, a, it's an evolutionary uh, byproduct. It's evolutionary byproduct? Humans God work together. We have empathy. Wait a minute, I thought it was survival of the fittest, according to evolution. So why can't we be genocidal? If, you could come if that makes the rest of us survive, why can't we be genocidal? Your species is going to grow faster than a species that doesn't cooperate with us. That's survival. Genocidal. Now, you wipe them out. That's what that survival of the fittest. That's evolutionary doctrine taken to its logical conclusion. See what you're doing, young man. You're borrowing from my worldview, which is the only foundation for morality. The only foundation for morality, and you're judging my God. But you know what? 
world to end. When you stand before God on Judgment Day, you will not be able to condemn God. You'll bring no judgment against Him. You'll be the one judge, young man, not God. But the only, the only worldview, I'll get to you in a second, the only worldview that provides a proper foundation for morality where someone can declare, that's right, that's wrong, that's right, that's wrong, is Christianity. Atheism provides no foundation for morality at all. All you can say is, I don't like it. If you're an atheist, you can say, I don't like it. Well, so what if you don't like it? You can't, you can't say it's wrong to commit genocide if you're an atheist. You're borrowing from my worldview as a Christian, my foundation, to declare something is absolutely wrong. But an atheist worldview, there's nothing wrong absolutely, there's nothing right absolutely. You can pick whatever you want. Rape can be okay. Child molestation can be okay. But when people bring uh, accusations against God, like the Old Testament God uh, told the Israelites to wipe out a whole group of people, which he has the right to do because he created them, or, or let's say the Crusades, these things they're doing, they're bringing an accusation against God or professing Christians by using the Christian worldview. That's inconsistent. That's illogical. Can I get a question? Yeah, uh, in, a, in a fair fight, Mike Tyson or Jesus? <laughs> Mike Tyson don't stand a chance. Actually, I have a question on the point of inconsistencies. Do um, you have a question? Well, actually, it's more of a thought exercise. But okay, well, I, I'll take questions right now, but I'm not taking thought exercises. If you want to preach, you can go somewhere else and preach. Well, no, it's not really, pre it's not what you're doing. I just have a, I, it's a question. Okay, well, ask a question then, go ahead. Well, if, if God is able to, to stop evil but unwilling, he is malevolent and not benevolent. Oh, I've, I've heard this before. Right. And heard it. Then how can your God exist? Uh, in the sense that he is a benevolent, all-loving creature when he allows evil to be per perpetrated in this world. Sure. Yeah, God, God allows, um, allows evil to happen, doesn't cause it, as the Calvinist God does. He allows evil to happen. No, I don't want to hear about Calvinism or oh, baptism. Uh, or I'm simply just pointing out the points here. But uh, you're attacking another denomination. No, I'm attacking a false accept. system of theology. I didn't say you accepted it. I'm just, why do you keep bringing it up when you're... Because I think it's important. Because a false system of theology needs to be re re rebuked and rejected. It's the same religion. So, and it's not the same religion at all. Uh, so what we have here is God, who's benevolent, and his greatest desire is to have an intimate, personal relationship with you, the creation he's made in his own image. We know this is the greatest thing he desires because he sent his own son to die on the cross to reconcile sinners back to himself through a blood sacrifice. Okay? So, but God, because God wants this love relationship, there must be free will. If there is not free will, there's no genuine love there. If I walked up to my wife 10 years ago when I met her, and there's a button in the back of her neck that I pushed it and make her marry me, would that be love on her part? Of course not. That would not be love on her part because I'd be forcing her to do it. But if, if, I, if I develop a relationship with her and she decides to love me willfully in return, now we have a love relationship. So God has given mankind free will. And because he's given mankind free will, there's also not only the possibility of good, but the possibility of evil. Now, the question is why does a benevolent God who knows all things and is all powerful why does he allow evil? The answer is this. Because God desires above all else an intimate personal relationship with his creation. And because he desires that, he will not force you to come to him. And let me just say this. That doesn't mean you always have free will. God can take away your free will at times if he chooses to. Then it's not free will. Oh, it sure is. The exception, you don't make a rule out of the exception. Um, and what I mean by taking away your free will is that let's, let's, say, let's say God's ultimate will is to make me live to be 100 years old to preach the gospel. Right. Let's just say a student here today decides, I'm going to kill him. I don't like him. Okay, that, that probably wouldn't happen, but just an example. Okay? And they track down, find out where I live. They start driving to my house. They have a gun. They have a knife. On the way to my house, their car breaks down. They can't get it fixed. They don't have the money to get it fixed. God knows this. Uh, God makes him lose the knife. He makes him lose the gun. Now they're stranded on the side of the road, somewhere between here and central Kentucky, because they're going to kill me, and God's taken away, to some degree, their free will. Now, now he isn't taking away their, their heart condition, 
they still in their heart have hatred for me. And the Bible says hatred is murder in the heart. So they still sinned. God's not stopped them from sinning, but he stopped them from taking out the act because he wants me to live to be 100 years old. Yes, but, but you have the choice, don't you? But if free will were to exist, God could never take it away because that is not free will. Because if God can take away free will at any time he desires, that means he has ultimate free will over all of us. Ooh, meaning that none oh, of us can oh, have free will. Oh, there. well. No, because if, we, if I have a right to free speech, but the government comes down and says I can't say certain things, that means I don't have right, the right of exactly. permanent, of sure. absolute free yeah, We have speech. to define what we mean here. Now, just because we have free will doesn't mean it's not a gift from God. James 1.17 says every, every good and perfect thing. Hold on a second. Let me answer your question. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of heavenly life. It does not mean that God can't temporarily suspend your free will if he wants to. Then it's not free will. Oh, it sure is. You can't take the exception and make a rule out of it. No, you can't take something away from somebody and say they always have it. See, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't say he always has it. I never had said, I have never said that you've always had free will. But when it comes to entering into a relationship with God, the God of the universe, you have free will in that decision. And that's, and that's why God is allowing evil because he wants you to come to him on your own free will and have a relationship with him. And if you have a relationship with the God of the universe, you will live holy. You won't commit evil. You'll do, do what he wants you to do. What I'm saying is that free, if, if God takes free will away from you, you never know if you actually have free will. Because if God can willingly take it from you, you may never have it. Uh, like I said, it's the exception, it is not the rule. No, no, it's the exception, not the rule. So you can't take the exception and say, oh, I never know if I ever have free will. I don't believe we do have free will. Then what, what are we controlled by? I believe that, say, 14, what, 15 billion years ago during the, when the Big Bang uh -huh. happened, all particles were spewed out into the universe in such a way. And these particles have been existing and doing what they do for billions of years. So these particles are what's controlling us. My brain is made of the same particles which follow very simple and often some oftentimes complex routines. So answer, I, I don't want you to keep on going. Just ask, answer this question. Do these particles control us? They're not conscious. They're not a conscious. I'm not saying you're aware of it. I'm saying do they control us? I'm saying that we are not creatures of free will. So we're, we're creatures, creatures who are predetermined by the universe because these atoms will always act the same So way. if if that's true, then why are you arguing about what my atoms are doing with me? <laughs> my atoms are controlling me and telling me to preach this way, to preach about the Christian God, to preach about free will, that there's an exception to the rule at times. So, I mean, and, and, you know, these people who are determinists, whether you're an evolutionary determinist or whether you're a Calvinist determinist, uh, they make no sense. Why even bother talking about things or arguing about things or reasoning about things or trying to convince me that I'm wrong and you're right if I'm just simply being controlled by some kind of outside force? You should be talking to the outside force, whether it's the particles or whether it's the Calvinist God, and tell them to change me. But even then, if you're being controlled by them, they're telling themselves to change me. It makes no sense. It's a self-defeating worldview. But yeah, if there is no free will, Man has accountability and responsibility for absolutely nothing. Nothing. How, how dare we, in a society where there's no free will, condemn a murderer to the electric chair? How dare we put someone in jail for life for doing what they were predetermined to do? How dare we kill anybody? How dare the Calvinist God send someone to hell for all eternity for something that God programmed them to do? Said, it's ridiculous. Well, I didn't say you. I'm addressing both sides of the spectrum here. Both sides of determinism. Determinism is self-defeating. In fact, if determinism is correct, God's determining everything, or, or the particle determining every single thing I'm saying and doing. You have no right to be mad at me for anything. 